Well, thank you for traveling all the way to Switzerland to come in and see us. What do you think is your brand's iconic watch of Parmigiani? It is the Tom de Pierre already because the Tom de Pierre has reset the style of the brand in a more contemporary way, keeping the values of understatement, as a refinement, elegance, and watchmaking content, which is very high. The first uh, watch that we started designing is the one I carry, which is the Tom de Pierre Micro Rotor. This is the milestone of the collection; it's the father of all the watches in the collection. But every timepiece that is additional is respecting the philosophy of this style, which is very minimal, very pure, but very rich in the making, in the finishings. No? So the Tonda BF Micro Rotor for sure is, is a reference. But then, according to your personal taste, if you're interested in, in the world premieres like the Gem Tira Trapante of last year, which was a very interesting piece we came up with, or today's Minus La Trapante, which is the second world premiere that is inventing a new function. These are all very consistent in the style, but they are giving an innovation. We are pushing the boundaries of watchmaking with something that has never been done before. And that's interesting because watchmaking should be looking at the future, basing its tradition, its, its skills, its knowledge to do something new. So that's what we're trying to do. Watch fans talk about the designers behind the popular pieces. How would you comment on the roles that designers play in watchmaking? In watchmaking, you have to decide what you intend by design. Because if a designer is doing a different dial color, or if it's a doing a decoration on a, on, a, on a design, I don't think that's you can call that an, an authentic design. It's a variant, no? it's something different. A designer is someone who interprets the value of a brand for a certain client that we have in mind, and tries to unify these two brand and the client through the product. And that is a project that is very intellectually deep. And if you are able to design something new from scratch, you are a designer because you design something from a white piece of paper, okay? Then sometimes I see exercises of designers who come from other craft fashion industry or other things who are doing a personal version of that. That is a collaboration. It's a commercial exercise. It uh, can be interesting, cannot be interesting. I'm not, I'm not really into that. To me, the creativity of, of a brand should be in the brand, okay? Because it's part of your most intimate activity. The creativity is really the most intimate thing that a brand has. And it should be really in the house. Oh, it should be in line with the brand's DNA. Of course, the soul of the brand, the brand is like a person. You cannot change your personality according to, to whom you are speaking. No? You have values, you have to be centered on your values and you have to be recognizable. If you start going everywhere, you are diluting your, your impact, you are diluting your understanding. The functions yes. that we develop are always uh, intuitive, no? useful, intuitive and innovative. And how would you comment on Dino Modelo's input? Well, I think uh, Dino Modelo gave a uh, a good interpretation, it was a first step. No? The Tonda GT was the predecessor of the Tonda PF. Mm -hmm. And uh, the most important thing was how the lugs were redesigned to integrate the bracelet. This was an element that uh, was very interesting. Then we stepped up and uh, I think the content now is, is uh, at another level, another level. How would you define innovation in watchmaking? You need courage to innovate, okay? Because innovation, it's a step into the unknown. And innovation can be on different areas. You know? It can be an innovation on the case materials, on finishings, or it can be in mechanics, uh, in the functions. So I think innovation in watchmaking has to respect the tradition of watchmaking. It's a difficult thing to understand because watchmaking is probably the only business that refused technological curve. If you think of a phone, uh, the first mobile phones, you could only speak and you had a leader which was Motorola. The second technological curve was you can put a message, a text, and then came Nokia. No, so every technology that came improving the, the mobile phone was a revolution and changed the actors of the game. 
in watchmaking, it's not like that. In watchmaking, you had only one technology, which was mechanical watches until the quartz. And then the quartz arrive, a technology which is much more precise, much cheaper, and it doesn't make it. It almost kicks out uh, Switzerland from the, the map, and then people understand that it is a, an art, it is something uh, more refined, it's, it's a pleasure to, to have a mechanical object on the wrist. So the improvement of technology of the quartz has been delegated to a functional uh, way of reading the time for a low price. So that's not luxury, that is a, a functional approach. Then another curve comes, it's smartwatches. You might remember Apple Watch in 2015 came with, with the ambition to revolutionize the industry and that didn't work. But it's a total additional business and it's a technological curve that didn't do anything to the Swiss watchmaking industry with the exception of the low end price. It's not an easy market today, it's a market who's decreasing mechanically and quartz. But if you look at price of the industry above 10,000 Swiss francs, it's only 1.8 million pieces and it's the maximum of the history of watchmaking in terms of value. So you can understand that that technology didn't even scratch the surface of the business of mechanical watches. So when you innovate, you have to keep in mind that mechanical art is at the basis of luxury timepieces. And then you have to interpret that in a way which is pushing the boundaries in the way you use that art. And that's what we're trying to do. The GMT Rattrapant is a function that didn't exist, but it's respecting uh, the mechanical art that is at the heart of the mechanics. No? So that is very important. And then the style have to have the time to express itself. No? Every time there is a fair like this one, you see thousands of new watches. Then you go home, you leave your laptop, you take a breath and you try to understand what did I see? And probably you have 15, 20 watches that come to your mind. A year from now, you'll probably remember two. And there was only one real new sign every 10 years that makes it and becomes an icon. True innovation is more rare than what we say. Could you please talk about the philosophy of developing these calendar watches? Calendar watches are a, are a very specific subject and a very interesting one. And uh, Michel Parmigiani, in his monumental work of restoration, developed a passion for calendars because uh, they are historical pieces, they are cultural pieces before being commercial pieces. Uh, the calendars won't change the numbers of the company. We don't do it for the, the money. We, we do it because it's an exercise of watchmaking uh, luxury. You know? So it's not many pieces, but it's uh, interesting pieces for collectors and uh, it's fascinating to see that the Xiali calendar, the first calendar was ordered by an Italian who does not speak Chinese because he wanted to have a, this piece at home because he understood the value of coming up with such a collection. So these pieces are really an expression of uh, deepness, of uh, cultural knowledge, of understanding a different way of telling the time. The calendars are a mirror of the civilization because the life that we have, the time that we have has been given to us to, get, to live our life is the same for humanity. But then the way that you try to master the time, to read it, to measure it, is different according to which culture you have. So nobody knows really why a certain civilization chose the sun to dictate uh, the calendar. Others chose the moon, like the Islamic. You chose the, the merging of the two, so it's a lunar solar calendar together in the Xali. And to put the, at the service of a different culture, the watchmaking culture of mechanical art is the best thing that a watchmaker can do because you're trying to interpret the time in a way which is not yours. So you have to understand, you have to respect, and that's what I like. It's really a, a respectful project. I really appreciate your collaboration. Thank you. Very excellent. I learned a lot. I was really happy that finally China yeah. could, could come to, to Switzerland and uh, hope to see you soon when I come the next time to China. I can't wait.